Hello, welcome to the new edition of Money Means Business. As we always say, and business means money. Stability and business uh, and lots of other things mean a lot of money. Um, what we're talking about uh, is uh, shipping and transport and what's going on in this world in Egypt. How can things be developed um, in the correct way and the right way? What's happening and what's happening in the world related to us here? This is what we're going to be finding out. And we have with us uh, our guest, uh, Engineer Shreen Nagar, International Transport Consultant. Thank you, sir, for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. It's always a pleasure having you. And um, uh, before starting and going for a short break, there is a lot happening actually in Egypt. And President Al Fatah Sisi held a meeting on Saturday today with the Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli and Minister of Finance Dr. Mohamed Maït. Uh, Presidential uh, Super uh, Spokesperson Ambassador Bassem Radi said that the President directed to resume following up the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic globally and regionally to reach the best financial vision to deal with the crisis and to maintain the benefits of the state's economic reform. Raji added that the meeting also reviewed economic indicators from July 2020 to January 2021, as might explain the current state budget during the last seven months, which witnessed a preliminary surplus of 18.1 billion pounds, as well as a revenues increase equaling 16% in expenses increase, equaling 12.4%. The budget details also showed a retreat in deficit rate from 4.6% to 4.4% year on year. Meanwhile, the Minister of Finance pointed to the notable growth on the state investment uh, rates in different fields, particularly in infrastructure and services. Might also tackled the ministry's efforts in digitalizing its institutions, renovating the taxing system, issuing hard currency bonds and upgrading the customs patterns in different logistical ports. Are you going for a short break after she will be coming back? A lot will be discussed with our guest engineer Shirin Nagar, international transport consultant and we are back in a few minutes. The latest report issued by the United Nations revealed that Egypt's GDP recorded a growth of 0.2% in 2020, and it is expected that Egypt's GDP growth will leap to 4.5% in 2021, despite what was left by the coronavirus pandemic or COVID-19 of devastating economic and social consequences around the world. The Economic Growth Outlook for 2021 report said that the expected increase in Egyptian GDP growth is supported by a strong recovery in domestic demand and the absence of severe restrictions on the balance of payments. According to the data contained in this report, this increase places the Egyptian economy at the forefront of the most developed African economies in 2021. The report expects Nigeria's GDP to grow by 1.5% in 2021 after contracting by 3.5% in 2020, while South Africa's GDP is expected to grow by 3.3% in 2021 after a contraction of 7.7% in 2020. The report shows that after a contraction of 3.4% in 2020, Africa is expected to achieve a modest economic recovery with GDP growth of 3.4% in 2021, depending on increased domestic demand and improved exports and commodity prices. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said that they are witnessing the worst health and economic crisis in 90 years, and they must remember that the choices they make now will determine their collective future.
We're back again to my news business with our guest, uh, Engineer Shri Nagar, International Transport Consultant. Welcome again, sir, with us here. Thank you. Well, a lot is happening. You know, let's not, you know, like review, like every time, you know, what's happening, but we know we want to know the new things. Well, um, when we talked before about Project 675, what are the ramifications and the development and uh, the progress in Port 675? And again, uh, what is Project 675 to remind the viewers? Project 675 is a project, uh, a code name to a project aimed at creating one of the world's largest maritime hubs in Egypt. Um, and uh, there is a group of uh, foreign consultants uh, involved in this project and everybody uh, in the project, everybody who has heard about the project thinks that uh, even with the uh, limits that we are talking about, which are pretty high, um, a lot of people, outsiders, they consider this is very little com compared to the potential uh, that exists in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, Project 675 is working on uh, crude oil transport, on, uh, on development of ports, on uh, the environmental status of uh, uh, green ports, which is something very important uh, in today's um, in today's era. Basically, we are uh, we need to have clean ports. That not just the water in the ports to be clean, and the air also needs to be clean. And this has actually been started not by Project Six Seven Five, mm -hmm. but the, the Ministry of Transport has started this by uh, demanding that any ship calling into Egyptian ports or into Damietta port specifically, will depend on shore power rather than its own generator which is emitting carbon dioxide and emitting exhaust gas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one of the one of many uh, sides uh, Project 675 is looking at, how to harmonize business between ports mm -hmm. and how to integrate the international, the national uh, transport networks be it rail network or road network, uh, with the ports and how the whole thing can work as a one big team uh, that is serving the international transport uh, industry, uh, be it uh, maritime transport, air transport or uh, rail transport, sur surface transport. Of course, we concentrate more on the maritime and the surface transport because that is where uh, uh, the bulk of the business takes place. Definitely. And the progress happening there. Well, it is progressing, uh, uh, but uh, you see the problem we have, again, whenever we uh, come into a, a situation where this is a project we want to, to uh, develop, uh, what do you think? Then we immediately collide with the old and the ancient legislations. Mm -hmm. And this has been a chronic problem in Egypt for a very long time. So they're saying like it needs again uh, a revision and uh, um, the old legislations concerning maritime transport? Yes, maritime transport legislations require a lot of uh, restructuring and uh, on several occasions I have been uh, uh, pleading with the president uh, to, to take uh, action and interfere there. The president is the only person authorized to um, revise this because you are talking about various ministries involved like the Ministry of Transport and then there is the Ministry of uh, Public Sector. There are ministries uh, that own facilities within the ports that are not really working in harmony with the ports. Uh, there is a lot of legislation that needs to be revised and restructured properly in order to give Egypt the boost it deserves. And if uh, uh, these legislations are put into place in the correct manner as we are pleading with the president, mm -hmm. I can uh, guarantee that Egypt will become one of the major 
maritime hubs in the world, if not the major maritime hub in the world. Our yeah. position, our geographical location, uh, forget about the threats of uh, the uh, polar route and uh, the north-south corridor by rail and all that, these cannot, cannot, cannot compete with the Suez Canal and cannot com compete with Egypt in the way people are making it out to be. Mm -hmm, definitely. Just um, um, talking, you know, like magnifying things that are not um, that. Uh, well, you see, uh, they cannot compete, but they can kill uh, a lot of good business in Egypt mm. only because of, not because they are clever, but because we have bad legislation. Okay. And it is shameful to say that the legislation in all the, uh, in the, in the Arab world, in various Arab countries, uh, that are boosting their maritime transport activities, all the legislation is being built and is being laid by Egyptian lawyers. Mm -hmm. And they are doing this to many countries in the world not, and not to their own country, which is rather a shame. Mm -hmm. They should be you know, getting the best out of them here in Egypt. Well, they are there. Uh, if they are called upon, I am sure I can guarantee you that they will come and they will rush to serve their country. Definitely, definitely. Well, um, what's important to talk about also is the Maritime Week Egypt. What is the Maritime Week Egypt? Maritime Week Egypt is an initiative taken by the various uh, pub, uh, private sector entities uh, in Egypt and in uh, various countries in the world. It is taken, uh, it is uh, led by a uh, group of British um, uh, consultants, uh, in, they are specialized in uh, marketing and specialized in um, development of, pro uh, of projects and development of seminars. Mm -hmm. The Maritime Week Egypt will be, uh, or rather Maritime uh, Egypt Week, mm -hmm. will be a seminar, a virtual seminar held sometime towards the second half of May. The exact date will be decided upon getting green light from the various speakers we have mm -hmm. uh, earmarked. And the idea there is that we are going to, uh, between the various uh, private sector authorities, uh, we are going to gather both British or foreign generally and Egyptian entities. Each is going to sit and speak of his own, uh, um, his own project, his own work. Like, for example, we have invited the chairman of the Suez Canal Authority, and the chairman of the Suez Canal Authority will, uh, uh, we've asked him to speak about the canal, the developments, the challenges, and yeah. how they are being faced. Okay. Uh, there's the invitation also for the uh, uh, Suez Canal Economic Zone chairman, and he will also develop or explain more about what is happening within his area of the business. Yeah. The Investments Authority Chairman is soon to be invited as well to talk about how, uh, how the Investment Authority is facilitating uh, rules for investors. Mm -hmm. um, many uh, people, I'm talking about the Egyptian side, the foreign side we have the Chairman of the Baltic Exchange will probably be speaking we have various people who are specialized in uh, green ports and recycling of uh, sewage on board ships or sludge on board ships, people who know how treatment is and people who know Egyptian uh, waters pretty well and know how we can make our, our ports green ports and safe ports in the shortest period possible. So is that creme de la creme experts uh, that are just going to be uh, present in this uh, week? Well, the, the invitation has been extended to the top uh, um, uh, officials in various aspects of the international maritime industry. Mm. And uh, the idea there is to, first of all, uh, take their views and also l get them to listen to the Egyptian side's uh, views and the Egyptian views as how we want to do things. Petroleum, for example gas, yeah. offshore exploration. Um, th there is a lot. It's, it's a six-day session, mm -hmm. a six-day uh, seminar. Every day will focus on a certain aspect of the maritime transport industry, and there's a one full day 
for the oil and gas industry, be it transport or be it exploration. Can we call it like a brainstorming too with the, the, the best of the best and creme de la creme um, and the recommendations would that be kind of uh, uh, taken advantage of and especially, of course, you know, Egypt here and its different uh, maritime institutions? That's a general idea. It's, it's actually a, a, a bra brainstorming session in one way. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody will present their own views. I mean, the foreigners are going to present their own views of Egypt and how that fits with the international market. Okay. Uh, at the same time, the Egyptians are going to tell the world how, wh what we're doing. Basically, uh, over the years, I have, and actually not me, but a lot of people, share with me uh, internationally that Egypt is very low profile when it comes to international public relations, mm -hmm. when it comes to international, um, uh, international um, exposure. Um, to give you an example, uh, when the International Chamber of Shipping team visited the Suez Canal in, 19, uh, in 2015, one week before the inauguration of the new canal, yeah. Uh, everybody, uh, and this had uh, uh, again uh, the chairman of Lloyd's, uh, the two chairman, uh, International Chamber of Shipping, uh, German Shipowners Association, Italian Shipowners Association, Japanese Shipowners Association. Mm. Uh, when we were given the presentation, uh, a comment was made: "Oh, this is a very ambitious uh, plan. How long is that going to take?" Mm -hmm. before it's finished mm -hmm. and the shock came to all of them mm -hmm. when it was said oh, it's finished in 11 months mm -hmm. um, a comment was that this is an engineering miracle by all standards mm -hmm. the Egyptians are very capable definitely but President sees the signature exactly yeah. exactly but you see the problem is that President Sisi's signature is only reflected in Egypt mm -hmm. and on an international industry like transport, like shipping, his signature must be shown to the outside world. Mm -hmm. And this can only be done through seminars like this, through better public uh, PR exposure to the world. I mean, nobody knew that the Suez Canal is going to become two ways and they all, all they thought the, the, uh, the, the group came and said, well, we thought you're going to be a bit of an expansion here, a bit of expansion there, mm. or you're going to make a, a, a sharp turn, mm -hmm. slightly less sharp. Or in, they did not imagine in their wildest dreams that, How? Uh, that this, mm. the, the magnitude of, of the project. Nobody knew about it. At least, okay, fine. Internally, we know all about it. Television is saying about it all the time. What is happening internationally? And this is an international business. This particular area, the Suez Canal, is not in service with, of the Egyptian economy as much as it is in, in, in service of the international shipping industry. Mm -hmm. Yet not many people in the international shipping industry knew about it. The International Chamber of Shipping, which is supposed to be the link between any entity and the international shipping community, had very little idea about it. Yeah. Lloyds, many, many, uh, the whole group they really did not know much about it. And this is exactly why we are focusing with Maritime Egypt Week, because this is extremely important. The world has got to know. Now, this will show, will be exposed internationally to over 60,000 different entities involved with ships, mm. be it traders, be it charters, be it ship owners, be it ship operators, mm -hmm. be it ship managers. Mm -hmm. Everybody will have an interest somehow. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it is, it is uh, very unfair, uh, unfortunate to, to see that a, uh, we have three shipyards in the Suez Canal zone, yeah. and when a ship is in distress, it either goes to Dubai, if it is in the Red Sea, or it goes all the way to places in, in, in Greece, like Skaramanga, or in Tuzla, in Turkey. Whereas we have shipyards that are equally good. Uh, to give you an example, Alexander Shipyard has picked up a very bad reputation over the years. Mm -hmm. But then suddenly, uh, the president was there and he, was, he gave instructions, I want this shipyard to become an international shipyard. And today, you visit the shipyard, it is pick and span. I mean, it's spotless. 
they are doing exactly, they are working exactly by the book. It does not differ from any international shipyard. Yet, everybody has in the back of his mind, oh, Alexander shipyard, oh, forget it's a disaster shipyard. Yeah. Why? Because they, nobody has told the world, oh, wait a minute, this disaster that, is dead exactly. and we have something new. Mm -hmm. This is what we are talking about. And that's exactly what, is focus, what the, the shipyard, the, 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 the seminar is focusing on. Mm -hmm. Ship repair in Egypt, we have excellent standards. Mm -hmm. Ship building in Egypt, we have built many ships. And believe it or not, we have built for the Russian commercial fleet. We are built for the German commercial fleet. We are building for the international um, uh, oil exploration. All this, yeah. nobody knows about. Why? Not because they are ignorant. No, but because we are silent. Mm -hmm. and we should just you know, expose it to the world, show the world how exactly. things develop. Show the world what you want to do. Definitely. Show the world what we are doing. This is Egypt. This is Alexander Shipyard. This is um, um, a Suez Canal Economics Dawn. This is a Suez Canal. Why spending more going to other ports, you know, or shipyards when you have it here? Exactly, and, yeah. and that, that is one example. The second example that you have with the, with the COVID-19 crisis, many countries are stopping mm. crew change on, on board ships, and this is causing disasters. It is becoming a humanitarian problem. Mm -hmm. Come here, watch what is happening, the chairman of the Swiss Canal Authority, by one contact with the International Chamber of Shipping, he turned things around completely, making mm. Egypt and the Swiss Canal the biggest crude change hub in the world today. We have rules, yeah. we follow the rules, we follow the IMO rules, and we follow the ICS rules, yes. and the Ministry of Health rules in Egypt. Yeah. And these were instructions given by the President to the Swiss Canal Authority or Administration, and the result is that they are being followed by the book and Egypt is now the biggest crude change hub in the world. We do not worry about Corona, we do not worry about COVID, we, there are certain procedures that are being followed. Definitely, but we're less, you know, than other countries that are really badly hit. Well, it's not a question of them being badly yeah. hit or not, it's a question of being restricting crew to, 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 uh, to, to leave their ships. Yeah. Some crew members have actually committed suicide mm. because they've been there for so long. Only a few days ago, on, on one of the uh, international press uh, um, uh, shipping uh, uh, circulars, uh, a crew member hung himself. Oh. He's been there, sitting there 24 months, doesn't know anything about his family, he wants to go home, he can't, and in the end he got so depressed he hung himself. Hopeless. Yeah. We've had in the Suez Canal, or out, just outside the Suez Canal, a couple of people jumped ship actually and uh, tried to swim ashore. They didn't quite make it. And they were saved, but again, this is why, this is because they are so desperate, they are finished, they are, they are fed up. And when the, when the Suez Canal Authority comes in, steps in, and organizes this, yeah. and they have organized it brilliantly, mm -hmm. I have to say. I mean, we had a problem with the quarantine being delayed because their boats are slow. We complained to the Suez Canal Authority, gentlemen, quarantine boats are very slow, there's a lot of delay on the ships. They positioned inside one hour, two boats on each end of the Suez Canal to serve the quarantine to speed up crew change and crew, you know, they have to do the PCR first before they can allow crew on board. And quarantine goes on board the ships to do that. Yeah. If the quarantine doctor is delayed then the ship loses a convoy, it becomes, it becomes a chain of delays. Yeah. The minute you, you told that, and that I was involved with personally, I spoke to the Suez Canal Authority, inside one hour there were two standby boats on each end of the Suez Canal to serve the quarantine in order to speed things up. This is what I'm talking about. Nobody internationally knows these things. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what we want to tell the world. Exactly. And that is where Maritime uh, uh, Egypt Week comes in comes here, with you know, all to just, these people. Yeah. We are going to tell the world what we are doing, and the world is still going to tell us what their impression is of what we are doing, of our country, and how we can be of better support to the to the international shipping community definitely definitely we're going short break after which we'll be coming back resuming our talk stay tuned to us don't go away Professor of Petroleum and Energy Engineering, Dr. Gamal al qalyubi said that Egypt is a pioneering country in the field of using natural gas, adding that using gas instead of petroleum in cars was a public demand. 
Al-Qaliubi explained that converting cars to run with natural gas does not affect the movement of the motor and all the capability of gasoline 92 are available in natural gas. Dr. Gamal Qaliubi revealed that all types of cars can be converted to natural gas but in the event that the motor has an efficiency of not less than 70% and the state has an infrastructure provided by the Egyptian petroleum sector. Engineer Tarak Al Mullah, Minister of Petroleum and Mineral Resources from Luxor, announced that the trial launch of the Mop Station app as one of the services provided to citizens to identify the locations of the supply and service stations of all marketing companies operating in Egypt for easy access and benefit from their services. Engineer Tarak Al Mullah, Minister of Petroleum and Mineral Resources, inaugurated the two new integrated fuel stations in the governorate that provide natural gas supply services for cars for the first time in Luxor, and attached to them are two centers for converting cars to work with natural gas to serve the city of Luxor and its neighboring areas. Back again, uh, money is business, and uh, our special maritime issue transportation with uh, our guest engineer Shirina Gar. Uh, um, well, uh, we have the agreement port number 55 of Alex. What's that? Uh, that's a berth uh, that's being developed at the moment in Alexandria and to, to a multi purpose and a container berth. And um, uh, it is needs. It, there, there is talk about it being uh, um, uh, handed over in concession to a foreign shipping line. Uh, I would rather uh, retain my opinion uh, privately because uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Well, um, let me just you know ask it differently. If we just say, how do we um, how do we uh, capitalize on uh, our existing ports? Uh, and how do we prevent um, extracurricular activities of other companies that can um, come in the market and, and, and really uh, um, make uh, uh, ba bad use of the opportunities presented to them uh, in our ports? Well, uh, to, to be very blunt, Egypt is losing colossal amounts of money on account of allowing foreign uh, agencies, foreign shipping bodies to control and concessions on, uh, on Egyptian uh, sites. Uh, if it, an Egyptian uh, company is acting as an agency for some line 
they will earn commission on freight, they will earn agency fees, and that is in foreign currency that will come into Egypt. And they will earn their various administrative fees which are on, in Egyptian currency. Now, if it's a foreigner or a foreign shipping line who's coming over and building his own or taking his own agency here, he doesn't need to put any, uh, any dollars here. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to send commission. He doesn't need to send to agency abroad. fees. Mm -hmm. It will keep it abroad. Why Definitely. should I bring my dollars and keep it with you? So let's say the idea of foreign concessions is not an, uh, a good idea. Well, right? the idea of port concessions can be a good idea, but it has to be properly controlled. Mm -hmm. You should not allow the shipping line or the shipping entity, whatever that may be, yeah. to control everything in uh, the way they are controlling, for example, in, uh, in East Port side. Mm -hmm. They control the agency, they control the stevedoring, they control the, the land transport, they control the logistics, they control everything. And all the big amount of money is going to the shipping line. What's in it for Egypt? Mm -hmm. This is the question. Why are you not allowing the Egyptians to work freely in these places because these people have concession and they consider themselves to be a, uh, an investor. Well, I don't think they've invested anything. Mm -hmm. They've only embezzled, okay. which is very, uh, which is rather shameful. Yeah. Uh, so good control and, and, and correct control is really uh, an important. Um, um, yes, I mean not give them all that free hand mm -hmm. to to charge whatever money they want to charge, mm -hmm. to uh, to behave whichever way they want to behave, and then if something goes wrong, they start screaming, or if they do something wrong and someone complains, they start screaming. Oh, an investor, Egypt is not encouraging investment this is not investment this is embezzlement okay yeah so they're not the the, the good idea of investors at all or you know like well, in, people in, in, in that like particular me. format no it's not a good idea okay okay uh well the new crude oil line from Elat to ashkelon well it's not new it's an old crude oil line that was uh built uh during the days of the shah mm -hmm. and it was there to move iranian oil uh, across to the mediterranean to give an outlet uh, of Iranian crude oil uh, to, uh, out of the Mediterranean. Now, uh, this is being uh, used as a threat mm -hmm. to, um, to um, bombard Egypt and to use as the United Arab Emirates mm -hmm. uh, crude oil, they are depending on the new uh, deal, uh, the, the, the peace, peace agreement they've had with Egyptian, uh, with the uh, Emirates. Mm -hmm. To, uh, to use their pipeline across to the Mediterranean. Uh, Egypt is much better positioned because if the, if the Israelis have one outlet, we have three. Yeah. And they are existing and they are functioning and they are working. To name one, it is Somid mm -hmm. pipeline. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Somid pipeline today. Most of the mo most of the uh, Arabian Gulf states, the, the oil states, mm -hmm. they are partners in the Somet pipeline, and the ships will go into uh, uh, Sokhna port, and they will pump out their cargo all the way up to uh, to Sidi Kreir, mm -hmm. and off it goes. We have another outlet, and that's just been announced that they're going to be developing a big petro hub in uh, in that outlet, and that outlet is Marsal Hamra, which is in Al Alamein. And this was operated at one stage by the Webco, uh, it's a Western Desert uh, Petroleum Company, and now that is becoming a big uh, petroleum hub as well, crude oil hub as well. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the, uh, there, are, there is also uh, Alexandria, which is capable of, uh, of, of exporting uh, not such big ships, uh, but they can also export uh, crude oil up to LR size, which is about 75,000 tons. Uh, so we we have the capacity already, and we are there, and we have we are working already. So um, should there be need for a fourth line, Egypt will can definitely build up a fourth outlet mm -hmm. uh, in the, on the Mediterranean, connecting the Red Sea with the Mediterranean, and uh, it will build that at a much much cheaper rate than uh, its competition from Israel will be. Okay. The same goes for the rail network yeah. and the, the rail link they are anticipating. There have been adv advertising to link between uh, Jabal Ali and Haifa yeah. and Jabal Ali and Elat. The, the same thing uh, 
uh, Egypt is, is better positioned to uh, accept rail link between uh, Egypt, the Arabian Gulf, and also Europe mm -hmm. over rail ferry network. Uh, this uh, uh, is, everybody will say, oh, big money. Big, it's not big money at all because the Egyptian National Railway Network is already being upgraded. It's there. Mm -hmm. You don't need to build something new. Yeah. It's already there, and the, the, the way um, things are, are being developed and progressed at the moment will allow such a line to develop, such a rail link to develop all the way from Barking in the UK up to Shanghai in, in, in China, mm -hmm. taking the southern belt, the southern sector of the, of the one belt that is the initiative of the Chinese. But it will be an Egyptian initiative it has to be controlled, managed, and operated by Egyptians to the interest of the countries that are in the neighboring, um, in, in the neighborhood. Most important is that the Israeli network has no link with Africa. Hmm. Although they might have some political links with Africa, they might be involved with Africa here or, or, or there, but the strength of Egypt inside Africa supersedes that of Israel mm. by, by a long, long way. Definitely. Well, uh, if we talk about rebuilding, uh, the rebuilding of the national fleets. The national Egyptian fleet has shrunk tremendously. There are a lot of, uh, what shall I say, hindrances mm. to, the Egyptian, uh, to, to the Egyptians rebuilding a fleet. To quote an example, an attempt was made in the late 70s, early 80s to build a, uh, a shipping company that will, carry, that will transport Egyptian grain imports into Egypt. Yeah. Uh, one company was built and then somebody decided that they wanted to create and encourage competition. So they built up another shipping company and the two Egyptians were competing with one another. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that is a very bad idea, but the result was that the two companies started losing so much money that they merged the two companies again into one company. Now, another uh, long, loud voice is being made today, oh, we're going to build another shipping line. Are you going to make the mistake, the same mistake, the third time over? Mm -hmm. uh, on the crude side and on the tanker side, the situation is different. On the crude side, Egypt is becoming a major exporting country for, the, for, for crude and will also be a major exporter of gas. Yeah. Now, in order to come into a market like this, yeah. here you have the giant traders. Other than the majors, you have the, the, the traders. Traders are not really oil companies, they're mm -hmm. simply traders. And these two have their own fleet. If we are to build up our own export fleet, then we need to be very gradual. Start first by a small voice chartering office, four people, five people, you take one ship, you move one cargo, and then you move the next cargo, you become known on the market, hey, wait a minute, this Egyptian flag is sitting on top of that particular company. Mm -hmm. So why not try it again? And then you expand slowly. This is, might be a tedious operation, but it is a must. Instead of going in and building up a fleet for three, four, five hundred million dollars, and then in the end sitting there losing money and that fleet is going to cost you money day in and day out because of the running and the, to and the operating expenses and the result is going to be the same hey wait a minute we're sitting here with a big mass of iron mm -hmm. that is basically a big mass of iron deteriorating we have no money to spend to maintain it as a result we are losing money and then we either scrap them or sell them for near scrap value and this is why we say no it have to go very gradual in order to put your foot into the door and then put the next foot into the door and then you go the whole body in, inside. But you do not go and say, all right, fine, I'm going to push it to the door when it's closed. The door will never open. Mm -hmm. If you break it, you probably break your shoulder first. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, you know, th these days they are building uh, Abu Qir uh, port. So what's the story behind it? What's, what's going to happen in that? Abu Kir port uh, is, a, uh, is a part of a network of ports being built. Uh, you have Abu Kir, you have West Alexandria, you have Gargoub, you have um, um, uh, South Safaga, 
several ports and also El Arish. Uh, these ports are complementing the, uh, the commercial ports in Egypt. But what I feel is a good thing about these ports is that they are run or they are following military protocols mm -hmm. in the management that is. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, uh, there is no such a thing as, oh, excuse me, I'm going for a coffee break. Oh, the driver, the crane driver is not in the mood today. He wants to be paid a little bit money under the table in order to be able to, uh, uh, to run, the, the, to discharge the ship faster. Or, uh, oh, wait a minute, uh, the pilot is not ready to go. No, we're talking here military. It is either you behave and either you follow the protocols or you go to court martial. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's what you see, that's see. yeah. And, and that's it. And after the revolution, mm -hmm. I have to say that this uh, revolution has brought out the worst of Egyptian uh, 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 manners, a lot of, of Egyptian attitudes, and so on. That is not to say that all Egyptians are bad. Quite to the contrary. But the the worst people will always surface much quicker mm -hmm. than the good ones. The bad yeah. ones surface quicker. And the result is that we have, we have seen much more corruption, we have seen uh, uh, much more negligence, we have seen a lot of negative attitudes, we have seen a lot of negative problems that can reflect on the, uh, on the uh, general economy. And, uh, you know, the only way to bring back discipline is to get the symbol of discipline. The symbol of discipline is the military. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are, as much as they are uh, too uh, d d military, but yet we need discipline. Without discipline, nothing will progress. Definitely, definitely. Well, this is really great, but we have one minute to go. So, you know, um, quickly like that, you know, like a, a recipe for success for our ports, you know, like the future. The recipe future. for success is... Uh, Again, a plea to the President. Mr. President, please, please intervene to revise and restructure legislations. Once these legislations are put into place, Mr. President, you can guarantee your country or our country under your leadership to be one of the biggest maritime hubs in the world, if not the biggest maritime hubs in the world. And instead of turning seven or eight billion dollars a year, you will be turning hundreds of billion dollars a year. Everybody seems to say that. And in fact, everybody seems to think that the sky is the limit when it comes to the potential of this country. Well, Engineer Sinshuinaga, thank you very much for being with us. Always a pleasure having you. It's always a pleasure being with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank and you. Uh, as we always end, God bless Egypt, God bless Egyptians, God bless our president, our army, our right army, and our police. And uh, as we quote from the Holy Quran, Yitkhulu Misr, insha'Allah, amenin, enter Egypt, God willing, safe. And from the Holy Bible, Mubarak, Shabi Misr, bless be Egypt, my people. I'm Nermin Azim, signing off. We'll see you again next week. Goodbye for now.